Hey, today we are here to talk about the Poodle attack. Poodle stands for Padding Oracle on Downgraded Legacy Encryption and is used to steal private information from secure connections. The Poodle attack is a person-in-the-middle attack that exploits a design vulnerability in the protocol of SSL version 3, which enables an attacker to eavesdrop on communication. SSL 3.0 was published in 1996 and replaced by TLS 1.0 already in 1999. The Poodle attack in 2014 showed that there is no secure way at all to implement SSL 3.0. The protocol was subsequently deprecated in 2015 by RFC 7568. Despite this, a lot of TLS implementations still provide backward compatibility for legacy systems. SSL 3.0 supports two encryption methods. The first one is the stream cipher RC4, short for Rivers Cipher 4 and also known as ARC4. Each by each, a plain text character is encrypted with a corresponding character of the key stream. While RC4 is very easy to implement, it has also been proven insecure. If the same key is reused for multiple connections, information about the key is leaked. If the plain text is sent over multiple connections using different keys, information about the plain text is leaked. The last and also the strongest attack was RC4 No More, short for Numerous Occurrence Monitoring and Recovery Exploit Attack. The second encryption method is the usage of a block cipher in CBC mode. CBC stands for Cipher Block Chaining. It is also unsafe in SSL 3.0 since the integrity of padding cannot be fully verified when decrypting, because the block cipher padding of CBC is neither deterministic nor covered by the message authentication code. The padding is appended to the message, and the last byte specifies the length of the padding. We will show later how the Poodle attack makes use of this vulnerability. To understand the vulnerability of the CBC mode in SSL 3.0, Let's first have a look at CBC encryption in general. For the encryption, we need the plain text, an initialization vector IV, which is a random value, and a key. The plain text is linked with the IV via an exclusive disjunction. This result and the key are the input for a block cipher encryption. In block cipher, a plain text of fixed length is encrypted via a key and results in a ciphertext of fixed length, which is usually the same length as the block of plain text. In the next step, a second block of plain text is linked via exclusive disjunction with the ciphertext of the first step. This process can be repeated for any number of times, therefore the name cipher block chaining. For the decryption, the cipher block has to go through the same number of steps as for the encryption. A plain text block is calculated by exclusive disjunction of the ciphertext of the previous step and the block cipher decryption of a ciphertext block. To protect the integrity of the data which needs to be transferred via SSL, it is signed and the MAC is attached. To fulfill the CBC block size, padding is also attached. This stream of data is encrypted using CBC at the sender's end and decrypted at the receiver's end. At the receiver's end, after the decryption, the receiver notes the size of the padding from the last byte of the padding, which is the size, and removes it. The receiver can then verify the plain text using the message authentication code. Assume the attacker is actively eavesdropping on the network. The attacker can quickly modify one of the ciphertext blocks on route by replacing the final block CN with any other block CI. The last block should be filled completely with padding. The MAC is in a previous block. This allows you to make modifications in the last padding block without invalidating the MAC. The recipient receives the modified data and proceeds just like before by first looking at the padding length. Since the last block was modified by the attacker, the padding length value will be overwritten. Then, the recipient removes the padding with a new padding length value and verifies the plain text, which is very likely to fail. But once in 256, this padding length value matches, 
and the recipient accepts the transaction, giving rise to an oracle. This way, the attacker knows the padding value, the encrypted value of the previous block, and can thus derive the last character of the plain text block. The attacker repeats this step multiple times, such that the characters in the copied block are shifted. Each time, the attacker learns one of the characters and after multiple transactions, obtains the plain text information. Now, let's have a look at how an attacker can force the use of SSL 3.0. In modern protocol version negotiation, a client would offer a specific protocol version and the server would respond with a protocol version. Then, the highest possible protocol version that both the client and the server support is used for communication. But to support backward compatibility, a lot of TLS clients implement the possibility to downgrade their use protocol version in a loop. In the first attempt at a TLS handshake, they offer their highest protocol version available. If the handshake fails, they downgrade the protocol by one version and try again. This is repeated with every time an attempted handshake fails. Once a handshake is successful, they proceed with their communication using this protocol version. Since this approach does not require the server to respond in any way, a downgrade of the protocol version can also be triggered by a network glitch or an attacker. The attacker can interfere with attempted handshakes until the client finally offers to use SSL 3.0. The Poodle attack has shown that there are no secure SSL 3.0 cipher suits. Consequently, SSL 3.0 should be avoided entirely. If the client or server only supports SSL version 3 or lower, it should be updated. If you occasionally want to work with legacy systems, it might be impractical to completely disable SSL 3.0. As a client, you can include TLS underscore fallback underscore SCSV in client hello cipher suits in fallback handshakes. Updated servers can then reject the connection in case of a downgrade attack. When a TLS server receives a connection message, which includes TLS underscore fallback underscore SCSV, it should compare client hello dot client version to the highest protocol version supported by itself and reject the connection when it supports a higher version than indicated by the client. If you want to learn more about TLS, go ahead and visit our website at tlsacademy.cs.upb.de.